Night fell once more over the city, shrouding the world in a blanket of hushed darkness. Lamont, however, remained awake, tormented by the overwhelming silence of the apartment, a stark contrast to the bustling noise of his recent jailhouse life. The walls, once alive with Leon's ragged coughs and whispers of memories, now echoed back his own shallow breaths. A single, naked light bulb hung from the ceiling, casting long, distorted shadows on the cracked plaster. These shadows moved and twisted, with the drafts sneaking through the cracked window panes, their shapes eerily reminiscent of the figures haunting his nightmares. In the gloom, the sensation of unrest and unease stirred within him, much like the way a small rodent would burrow through the dirt, gnawing and scraping. That image drew him into the clutches of sleep once more, a realm not of peace, but of torment. This dream was different, yet painfully familiar. The small apartment was overrun by rats, their beady eyes glinting maliciously in the dim maliciously in the dim light. A sea of gray fur swarmed over the worn-out furniture, their tails coiling around Leon's abandoned wheelchair. Their squeals echoed eerily, amplified by the menacing silence of the apartment. Lamont found himself trapped, unable to move, as he watched the creatures overtake the place he had once called home. The vividness of the dream struck him, each scrape of claws against the wooden floor, every piercing squeak, enhancing the sense of impending doom. Suddenly, the rats turned towards him, their eyes reflecting the weak light, focused on him with an intensity that sent shivers crawling up his spine. He felt them crawling onto him, their wiry fur brushing against his skin, their tiny teeth gnawing at his sanity. His attempts to shake them off proved futile. The dream Lamont was paralyzed, filled with terror and guilt. His gasp of horror jolted him awake, pulling him out of the vermin, infested nightmare back to his rat, less reality. A thin sheen of sweat coated his forehead, his heart pounding an unsteady rhythm against his ribcage. He looked around at the dimly lit room, half expecting to see the rats from his nightmare, but found none. His mind raced back to the beginning of this ordeal. Leon's dream of the rats. The fear he'd initially dismissed now clawed at his conscience, wrapping him in a cloak of unease. As he lay back against the damp pillow, his mind teeming with the chilling images, the quietness of the apartment seemed more oppressive, the shadows cast by the solitary light bulb more menacing, and the fear more tangible. Sleep, once again, became a distant entity, leaving him alone with his thoughts and his persistent, guilt-ridden nightmares. Drifting back into the nebulous world of slumber, Lamont once again found himself in a dreamscape. The apartment morphed, the threadbare carpet replaced by soft grass, the cracked walls transformed into towering trees. Yet, the most shocking change was not the surroundings, but the presence of Leon. In this dream, Leon was not the frail, sickly man he had last seen. He stood tall, robust, radiating an aura of ethereal strength. His features were softer, unmarred by suffering, and his eyes sparkled with a vitality that had been long lost to the ravages of illness. Lamont. Leon's voice echoed through the verdant dreamscape, warm like a forgotten summer's day. I think I am, Unc, Lamont responded, his voice trembling. I don't know how to live in a world without you. The two men sat on a fallen log, a soft breeze rustling the leaves overhead. The words they shared were like droplets of water on parched earth, nurturing yet bittersweet. They spoke of past misdemeanors, the tragedy of Melvin's death, and the weight of the curse that had overshadowed their lives. Leon's words, while laced with comfort, brought along a torrent of guilt and confusion for Lamont. There was a sense of absolution in Leon's forgiveness. Yet the underlying accusation echoed in his ears long after the words had faded. It was a paradox that twisted his heart into knots. The relief and the remorse both equally piercing. Simultaneously, these unearthly encounters also served as a stark reminder of the physical absence of Leon. Each word, each shared laugh, each shared laugh, 
Each shared memory brought the bitter pang of loss to the forefront. A hollow ache blossomed in Lamont's chest at the sight of Leon's smile, knowing he would not witness it in the world of the living anymore. At one point, Leon reached out, placing his ghostly hand over Lamont's. I never blamed you, Lamont, he said, his voice no more than a gentle whisper. Remember, guilt is a heavy chain. Let it go. These words, intended as solace, added another layer of complexity to Lamont's emotions. The heartache of losing his only family mingled with the relief of forgiveness. The guilt of his perceived negligence clashed with the confusion of these supernatural meetings. As he woke up, the silence of his apartment seemed to close in around him, a grim reminder of his solitude. The dream was a double-edged sword, offering solace, yet cutting deep with the harsh reality of his loss. Lamont lay there, the first rays of dawn casting long shadows in the room, as he processed the whirlwind of emotions that unearthly encounters had stirred up. His heart ached with the pain of loss and the longing for the comfort that these surreal dreams offered. The dawn found Lamont adrift on a sea of introspection. His mind, under the cloak of sleeplessness and heartache, unraveled threads of recollections, weaving a tapestry of tragedy. The piercing weight of what-ifs knotted his thoughts, each query cutting deeper than the last. What if he had not been arrested? What if he had been there when Leon's health took the fatal nosedive? What if he had paid heed to Leon's dream, dismissed it as a mere figment of imagination, instead of a prophetic signal of doom? Guilt draped itself around him like a shroud, a relentless specter clinging to the edges of his consciousness. He could taste the bitter tang of regret with each breath, a haunting reminder of his actions and their unforeseen consequences. The lottery ticket, a beacon of hope that transformed into a harbinger of destruction, was the epicenter of his remorse. With every tick of the clock, his solitude amplified, resonating with the emptiness left by Leon's departure. The harsh reality of the apartment, devoid of Leon's presence, was a tangible symbol of his guilt. Each creak of the floorboards, each flicker of the shadows, felt like an accusatory finger pointed at him the silent embodiment of his remorse. As the night gave way to a new day, a thought, more unsettling than the rest, surfaced in Lamont's troubled mind. Had Leon, in his cryptic dream, his insistence on the lottery, consciously sought an end to his suffering, the notion was a blade that sliced through the fabric of his sanity, leaving behind a trail of disquiet. The question echoed in the confines of his mind, growing louder with each repetition. Leon's words from his dream played like a broken record. Guilt is a heavy chain. Let it go. But could he? Could he absolve himself when there was a possibility that Leon might have chosen to precipitate his own demise?